بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الأمين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سي صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله عليه وسلم Today we're going to revise for the exam which will be on Sunday God willing with grade 4 okay? So for that you have to pay attention you're going to have two uh, stories in this exam not only one, uh, one, uh, one story okay? and you have all the pages of uh, grammar and spelling mentioned in the weekly plan so please 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 go back to all those pages because we're going to revise a part of those pages but you have to revise the others and you have to be able uh, to write all the words that we have studied together okay so the two stories that we're going to have in the, in this exam are uh, the seeker of knowledge Jean-Francois Champillon a, uh, a and uh, and uh, a is a, a, a is and in, in in French, okay? So uh, and uh, the story, the cliff hanger, okay? For that, we're going to start now. So the first question: When was Jean François, Jean -François Champillon or Champillon born? When was he born? He was born on 1790. Pay attention. I'm going to ask about the dates, okay? I'm going to do that in the in this exam, okay? Where did Jean-François go when he was 11? He went to Grenoble, okay? And in, uh, in uh, the copy that you're going to have on Classera, you're going to have uh, Sudan here, okay? And Grenoble and Egypt. But I prefer to change France into uh, Sudan because Grenoble is in uh, France, okay? So you won't, uh, you won't be confused. Then, what did Jean-François do in Grenoble when he was 11 years old? I'm, I'm, uh, I'm asking about the details. You can notice that, okay? So why, oh, what did he do when he was uh, uh, 11 years old? Jean-Francois read all the books they had in Egypt. Not that question. No, go back, teacher, please. Okay. Uh, he met a famous scientist that was uh, at the beginning of, uh, of the story, of course. He went to school. No, he met Napoleon later on. Not when he was uh, uh, 11 years old. Pay attention to that. Why did Jean Francois, or why did Jean Francois's brother nickname? What did why did Jean Francois's brother nickname him the Egyptian? Okay, Jean Francois read all the books they had on Egypt. That's why he called him the Egyptian. What were the scholars in Paris studying? If you remember, La Rosetta Stone. Okay. And Adam Hamdi, that time, asked me, La Rosetta Stone, can you translate the teacher to uh, Arabic? And I told him, uh, they call it in Arabic, Hajar Rashid, because they found it in a place in Egypt called Rashid, okay? Why did people call Jean-Francois a traitor? Okay, because he was a friend of Napoleon, of course, that's why uh, they called him a traitor. And uh, he ran away for a long time in the forest, okay, to live in the forest for a long time. Then after a long period, he came back. And later on, you know the story, he became a hero in, uh, in France. Uh, what did Jean-Francois receive in September 1822? He received a package, and you can go back to the story to check uh, that. Now, let's move forward to cliffhanger. What is the problem in cliffhanger? So, the dog is stuck at the top of the mountain. Of course, you know, Gritz is stuck at the top of the mountain, and the two climbers who went up and uh, Gritz was, was uh, like running after those two climbers. Uh, they went down because the storm is coming and uh, they didn't pay attention to the dog, okay? Because they were afraid and they ran away without taking the dog. Axel can't tie his shoe, so this is not Axley, okay? I'm sorry, my, uh, my word is changing uh, the, the words, okay? The way uh, it wants. So Axel can tie his shoe. No, Doug is very sick. No, Doug, Doug is the father. The two women are hurt. No, of course. Why do you think they had to leave Gritz at the top of the mountain? Of course, we are asking about the two women here. If they took the dog with them, they might not be safe themselves. And we have talked about this in the worksheet. Then, what is the name of the climbing school? I remember that Kamal answered this one. The Titan Mountains Climbing School, of course. It's not, uh, if you are in top, you are down, climb it, the mountains rock. Not all of those names. Why couldn't Gritz get down by himself? I have changed this into itself in uh, the Classera. Okay, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. He was scared, it was scared, 
Yes, the dog was scared. It was sleeping. No, the dog was not sleeping. It was very sick. No, the dog was not very sick. The dog was very scared and it couldn't like uh, rappel down without the help of, uh, of Axel. Why didn't Axel's dad stop him when he started climbing in the storm or during the storm, okay? Axel is a, a, an experienced climber and you know that. That's why his dad didn't want to, uh, to tell him to go down. He was uh, a professional climber and he was ready, you know, the theme of our story is heroism. He was ready to sacrifice himself for the sake of his dog, which he considered as a part of his family, okay? Then, what is the genre of this story? Not for this story, of this story. It's realistic fiction. It's the first time that we meet this genre. Here we're going to have realistic and we're going to have fiction. Everyone knows that fiction is imaginary. How, teacher, how are we going? You asked me this question at the beginning of the story. How are we going to have realistic and fiction at the same time together? Yes, this story is a fictional story, but all the characters in the story, they are normal people all the events are normal events it can happen as we said okay it's a story which is not real okay it didn't happen but it can happen we do not have dragons we do not have wizards we do not have like unreal events all the events are are real and it can happen that's why we call it realistic fiction what is axel's father's name Okay, what is his, uh, uh, his name, the father, his name was uh, Doug. Thank you so much. Let's move forward to the vocabulary, please. Pay attention to the vocabulary because we're going to have the vocabulary of cliffhanger and the seek of knowledge. So, coil means a spiddle or ring formed by, uh, by wind. Then listen to me. Here, for example, uh, uh, we're going to have a rope. Pay attention. We're going to have a rope which is uh, coiled, okay? It's going to be in this shape. Okay, this is my mouse, okay? Here, it's going to be uh, coiled, okay? This is the meaning of uh, coiled, a rope which is coiled. So, when you foresee something, okay, especially wizards, they say that they can foresee the future, Okay? The simple past is for so, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's the word that means uh, predict or estimate, okay? When you foresee the future, you estimate the future, you predict the future, but no one can predict or estimate or foresee the future but God, but Allah. To go down a rock face, okay, or other steep, of course, your face is facing the rock, okay? The big rock, okay? And you're going down using a, a, a rope. That's what we call uh, to rappel, okay? A long, narrow, usually vertical hole in a rock in a mountain is going to be called a shaft. And we know that. We have, uh, we have revised that together. Learn people or people having much knowledge. Some people are asking me, what is this teacher? I'm using a tablet, okay? I'm using a tablet and I'm putting my hand on the tablet to write, okay? So I'm going to be swearing on, on the tablet and it's not going to be uh, cool, okay? I cannot write while uh, having sweat here. So uh, I use this. It's a professional glove for uh, people who are writing with uh, such a tablet. So learned people or people having much knowledge, okay? We call them scholars. And here, the past participle of learn is learned with ed and learned. Both are correct. You can check it in, uh, in the dictionary. Building used for the service or worship of God or gods. You remember we talked about the temple when we have been talking about India and the people in India, people uh, in, in Saudi Arabia and all Muslim countries, they pray in the mosque. We pray in the mosque. Okay. Christian people, they pray in the church. Okay. Jewish people are going to pray in what they call a temple, okay? And people in, uh, in India, for example, people who are worshipping Buddha and so on, they pray in, uh, in temples, okay? So I'm going to stop here. This is the f first part. We're going to have another part. Please carry on with the, the second part. Goodbye.